Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another Wednesday night hobby hangout. Hope everybody's well. Hope your Monday and Tuesday didn't go too bad. And for, for VJ there in the chat, I hope your Thursday is starting off pretty good too. We've got a few of you in the chat nice and early there. So let's say hello to you lot. Tolmard Greybeard in, nice and sharp there. Hello to you, sir. Mark a super pumpkin man saying, not going to make the chat today. Too many errands to run. Thank you for popping in to so say hello, mate. Um, Blizzards is in as well, saying greetings and salad nations. <laughs> We've got Phil Wilkinson saying all the best to you, Bobby Dazzlers. Hello, Phil, mate. How are you doing? Um, we also have Scott Latham painting his Kings of War Armada Dwarf Fleet tonight. Very nice, mate. Um, we've got, going down the chat there, Dave Mackay. Good evening, sir. Hope you're well. We've also got Tyler Peck. Says, what's up, mate? He's asking what people are working on. Yeah, let me know if you're... Are you hobbying tonight? Are you just hanging out for a bit of chill? What's your plans? Christian Reeves, good evening, Chris. How are you doing, mate? John Estel's working on his giant tonight, and he says, how are we, brush lickers? Well, I'm all right, mate. I hope you are, too. Um, Tyler's continuing on his Storm Boys. Uh, taking way too long to get them done. Jason's in as well. Hello, Jason, mate. He says, these Marvel Crisis Protocol minis look so fun to paint. Yeah, I must admit, mate, I'm enjoying painting them. I did say I was going to kind of keep this all for hobby stuff, but I just, I fancied a bit of change of pace tonight, just paint something a little bit different, so I thought I'd paint a little bit of terrain tonight. Um, Ice Moon, hello to you as well. VJ, good morning, sir. Um, Jacob's asking, where is everyone? It's blazing sunshine outside, mate. Everybody's enjoying a little bit of a warm summer night, I think. Uh, Wayne Hayward, good evening, Wayne. How are you? Frederick Schultz, hello to you as well. <laughs> Tyler says, anyone eating tacos? <laughs> Not for a while, mate. I haven't, anyway. Ram Design, hello from Canada, he says. Hello. Hello to my Canadian friends. How much is a duck, how much is a duck worth? Hello, that name. hello to you as well. Uh, VG says, he's hobbying, so starting well. Wednesday finished a bit average. Managed to smash my iPhone. Ooh, that sounds like an expensive uh, accident, mate. Uh, Ed Hanley, good evening to you. Phil Johnson, this is his first stream in ages. Welcome back. This is his painting, painting a vampire Count and Neferatu. One of their models built and undercoated a long time ago. Finally seen some paint. Nothing wrong with that, mate, is there? Uh, Peter Stockdale, good evening to you as well, mate. And VG said it wasn't X and buggy due to water damage. Now I have an excuse to order a 12. <laughs> that's never a bad thing is it mate trade it in for a new one let's start again so as i mentioned and as you saw on the thumbnail there we're going to be painting some uh, marvel crisis protocol terrain so some of the some of the packs that you buy have kind of like the miniatures in with their with their cards and like uh, the tokens and stuff like that some packs have um uh, like kind of pieces of terrain and stuff so when i bought the deadpool uh miniature it came with the deadpool taco truck so, if I can press the right button, this is what we're painting this evening. Now, I've primed this black, and I've gave it a little dry brush with some grey as well. Um, partially just to kind of highlight some black bits, um, and partially also because it, it stands out a lot better against the black background on camera and stuff as well. And just while I've been sitting waiting for the stream to start, I've started painting some of the silver along the, the checker plate along the bottom there. So we're just going to carry on with the silver stuff. Um... Ram Design says, smashing an iPhone, is that like smashing a like button? Feel free to smash the like button, please do not smash your iPhones. <laughs> that would be a, a, a very expensive way of saying that you're enjoying the stream. So, we might as well just dive straight in. I'm expecting it to be quiet in the next few weeks and stuff. You know, kids' holidays, people are off on sort of trips away and stuff like that. The weather being nice, um, <laughs> globally by the sound of things. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm expecting them to be a little bit quieter, but it just means we get you uh, you hardcore lot in, you regulars. You can all come and hang out and make up for it. So, Small, good evening to you as well. He says, I have to watch this later. He's, I'm watching darts. Well, there you go. Well, hello to you, Small, and enjoy the darts. So yeah, so the, the colour I'm using at the minute is uh, Citadel Lead Belcher. Just... Thin down with a little bit of Vallejo thinner, airbrush thinner, just to thin it out a little bit, and then I'm just kind of putting on some nice thin coats. We probably end up with, with silvers, I tend to always kind of put a bit of a wash over them and then sort of dry brush them up with another silver as well to kind of give a little bit of shade and brighten them up as well. So I just want to get a decent coverage of it, really. I'm not, uh, I'm not being too 
too fancy or too careful with this. But um, yeah, a little bit of terrain I, for a change. I've, uh, I've got quite a bit of terrain for Marvel Crisis Protocol. I've got stuff that came in the in the uh, in the starter box. I've also three three D printed some stuff as well. But I must admit, um, painting the terrain's kind of been a bit on the back burner, which was part of the reason why I wanted to paint a little bit tonight. I thought it'd be nice to have a change of pace. I feel like I'm kind of not really finishing projects at the minute, so this will be a good little kick up the butt just to just to get something finished. So yeah, so what's everybody else up to then? You're welcome saying hello folks. Still working on the house tonight. Have a good hangout. Thank you very much, you're welcome. Peter Nicholas, hello to you as well. How are you doing, sir? Hope you're keeping well. Yeah, this weather is definitely um kind of sort of catching me out anyway at the minute. It's it's making me really tired actually, just the heat. So we finished a little bit early on Monday. Probably only about 20 minutes to be fair. But we'll see how it goes tonight because I might uh, I might try and make the most of the weather and sit outside with my wife for a little bit before bedtime. So we'll see how much we get painted. We'll see what the views is like. And I think we'll go from there tonight, see how it goes. So yeah, I'm just painting this on, trying to keep it smooth. Because we'll, like I said before, we'll be kind of layering up from there. So other than VJ's um, unfortunate iPhone accident, how's everybody else's week doing? Is anything happening you want to tell me about? Anything you are you watching any new TV shows at the moment? Watching any films? Anybody kind of have a few days away of a bit of a break or anything like that? What's uh, what's diddling in the world? Uh, VJ says plenty, plenty more. Since he's in lockdown, still so looking to get at least another three more weeks in total. Nice one. Uh, Ice Moon's prepping some dinner. Vigis is building the war in the hall still. He's on the rank and file now. How are you finding them, mate? Are they a little bit better to build than some of the older stuff that you've been there uh, working with? Because I know you weren't having too much fun with some of those models. So I've just got to keep remembering to keep this on camera as well. I've Moved the camera around a little bit last week. So I'm just getting used to a new kind of painting angle as well. It's actually slightly more comfortable than it used to be, which is why I've moved it. But I keep trying to resort back to the way the camera was before when it was over my shoulder. I kind of started painting like in a bit of a strange angle. But uh, this feels more natural. It's just about lighting. The problem is with the camera above me is the the lighting I've got is off to the side or it's above but if I bring the light so I can bring it to there but then you start to start to get in the way as well so it's just about getting it in the right place um, how much Duckworth says just picked up a job lot of tau and it came with an orc a dropship how the hell do we store those <laughs> I've got no idea I mean I've no idea how you store those big 40k stuff Ed Hanley says, what black did you use? This is the Colour Forge Black Primer, mate. The matte black primer. The one that is super, super matte. I've been really impressed with that. Um, I used the um, the matte spray, the matte clear varnish, which frosted some of my models, which I was a little bit peeved about because I'd used it previously and it had been fine. Um, but yeah, I, I, so I'm not sure I'd kind of recommend the varnish over anybody else's because uh, it still suffers from the same problems that a lot of varnish does but the um, the primers, the sprays I'd be keen to try some of the coloured ones, that's for sure right, I'm just painting it like just a little bit along the edge here so you're never going to see the bottom of it but just to make sure we cover the main areas um, Greg says he's just finished season 2 of the startup on Netflix Start -up. is that the one with the um, it's got Martin Freeman in it, hasn't it? I think I've already seen that before. It's pretty good, actually. Um, Wayne here with it. He's building some gunfighters from Great Escape Games. Might start on Wild West Exodus Rangers. Ah, a little bit of a, a cowboy stint going on, eh? Very nice. 
I was a bit disappointed to see that uh, War Cradle Studios weren't going to be at UK Games Expo this year because they're, they're one of the main sponsors but unfortunately they're not they're not attending in person this year so that was a bit of a shame I must admit I'm a little bit worried about UK Games Expo this year feels like they've kind of chopped and changed the rules that they have in place and because of that there's quite a few companies have, have dropped out um, and then they changed the rules again but by that point it was too late for those companies to, to kind of get back in again so I keep weighing up whether it's whether it's still worth the trip to be honest because I'd like to go for a few days away but it's making me feel like there might not be enough there to kind of uh, to fill out my weekend like there normally is. And it sounds like there's a lot less people going as well. Um, we just saying, yeah, they're going together pretty good, which is making life easier. It says, watch the first episode of Professor T last night. Professor T. I don't, I don't think I know what that is, mate. Is that the one with, not Alexander Armstrong, the other guy. He used to be like, his comedy partner. I saw something... Um, advertised I think that's what that was I've been watching a, um, a documentary on Netflix called um, I think it's called this is pop and it's like a bit of like a it's like a each episode is about a different sort of style of, of pop music and its influence over the years and stuff I found it really really interesting it's been it's been a good watch because it's kind of like a music documentary it's good to put on in the background and just kind of listen to and um, I've, I've, I've been really enjoying that actually um, Ice Moon says for those living in the UK I enjoy horror movies and have Disney Plus I want to recommend The Empty Man Ooh, I will uh, definitely uh, put that on my watch list mate. thank you very much for the recommendation I've not heard of that I do have Disney Plus and I do like horror movies so that should be a perfect combination I must admit I've got a bit of a gap in my watching, uh, watching life now that Loki's finished so Um, Tom Moore's watching The Walking Dead on Amazon Prime. Uh, I, I kind of uh, fell out with that, mate. I, I never, I never got as far as the Negan episodes, to be honest. I got a little bit bored of it, but I think I just maybe I was binging it. Maybe I should go back to it at some point. I've read the comic books um, previously, so maybe that was one of the reasons why I was finding it a bit slow at times. Um. <laughs> Uh, Ed says for matte black I like scale 75 artist colour this is just the primer mate to be fair this is just uh, this is just the matte primer so we'll see how uh, how much of it remains at the end but we'll see how it goes um, Tizzy Brindren says he's just working and stressing out over everything that I still need to have done before the convention I was just going to say mate that um when is the convention? It feels like you've been stressing for quite a while now, mate. I don't want you to stress for that long in, uh, in advance. Um, Anna, hello, Anna. How are you doing? This is we'll be at the expo on Friday, so hopefully we can say hello. Hundred percent. If I'm if I if I definitely end up going, I will be there to say hello. But I must admit, the hotel's not cheap. Um, it's traveling down for the weekend. I'm just. I'm kind of weighing up the options, I must admit. It's not a cheap weekend. It's a long way to go for a day. So, I'm just kind of weighing it up now. I've still got some time because I can cancel my hotel up to a certain point. So, and then all I'd lose is the price of my ticket, which in the grand scheme of things is not very much, so. I'm keeping my options open at the minute. Up to, at the minute, I'm still going, but I must admit, I'm becoming a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure there's going to be enough there to kind of uh, to fill the weekend. Uh, not like there normally is, anyway. Um, your thoughts on the Loki finale? Well, I don't want to give it away, mate, for anybody that hasn't seen it. However, what I would say is, without giving too much away. Um, I thought the last episode was a little bit dragged out, mate. It wasn't a great finale. Um, overall, I've really enjoyed the show. 
Um, so it didn't kind of, I'll tell you what, let's just paint these silver. It didn't spoil it for me kind of thing, like having a bit of a, a bit of a slower last episode. Um, but yeah, it wasn't the kind of, it wasn't the massive big kind of finish I was hoping for, but I'm trying to pick my words here so I don't kind of spoil anything for anyone. It has opened up lots of, um, lots of options for the future, shall we say. So I think it's, it, it feels like the kind of story that was there to get you from A to B as opposed to a kind of a fully rounded story arc. Um, and we know there's a second season coming, so and, and we know that it potentially feeds into other Marvel movies. So yeah, overall I enjoyed Loki. Last episode was probably one of the weakest, but uh, yeah, overall I enjoyed the series. Uh, Peter says, I'm okay, thanks. Had a spin on the bike earlier. I thought you said a spill at first, mate. I thought you had a little bump. Uh, nice to get out of being poorly. I hope you're feeling better, mate. I didn't realise. Colton Lane, good evening, mate. Um, Ed Hanley says, it's Ben Miller. That's the one I was thinking of. He used to be part of the kind of Miller and Armstrong comedy duo. So Alexander Armstrong was the other one. And I couldn't remember Ben Miller's name. It is the one I was thinking of, mate. Uh, Ed said, I thought Loki was better than Falcon and Winter Soldier, but not as good as WandaVision. Interesting. I enjoyed... I enjoyed all three, but I would have probably put One Division as my third best. I, I really enjoyed Falcon and Winter Soldier. Loki probably almost equally as much, but I just wish it had kind of had a bit more of a rounded story. Uh, and One Division I enjoyed, but it, it didn't it didn't kind of hook me the same way the other ones had. Um, Joseph saying Scale seventy five puts out a nice product. I've never used Scale seventy five stuff, mate. I just never kind of, uh, I've never seen it to buy any, if I'm perfectly honest. And I hate buying like sort of one or two pots of paint online and paying postage when the postage costs more than the bloody uh, paint does. So, um, <laughs> VJ says it's been spoiled plenty online. If anyone was watching, they should have seen it by now. I know, but I don't want to be that guy. I think I, I, I put it this way you've seen it and I think I've told you enough that you understand uh, kind of what I'm talking about and how I feel about it um, you agree it was better than um, Falcon and Winter Soldier about the same as WandaVision ah, interesting I think I actually liked um, Falcon and Winter Soldier better if I'm honest but I, I really enjoyed Loki Right, just putting these grills on the back here. Um, James Bray, good evening, mate. How are you doing? Uh, Chase have seen him as bored during Black Widow. I finally burned out on the superhero stuff. Uh, I've not seen Black Widow yet. I, I, um, I did intend to watch it on Thursday night, but uh, unfortunately, that was not <laughs> that was not the plan that ended up happening. Um, as I, I think I mentioned on on Monday, I had a bit of a bit of an unplanned uh, visit to the hospital on Thursday night so uh, yeah so my plan to watch that while my wife was out my plan to watch that little one go to bed and watch Black Widow and never happened so um, right so I think we've got the bulk of the silver stuff I'm sure oh, there's a little bit here as well I'll do this pipe work here as well oh make sure my he's not on the screen there um, Blizz says I, I've not seen Loki but I do know there's a mid credit stinger in there a lot of people apparently missed to be honest mate I don't think it's a big I don't think it's a big deal the, the mid credit um, thing is basically just saying that there's going to be a season 2 of Loki like Loki will return kind of thing so that's not like I don't think that's a massive spoiler or anything like that um, but yeah, a lot of people did miss it, I think. So a bit of pipe work on there. I don't think there's any on this side. Cool. We'll let that uh, dry for two minutes while we catch up on the chat. Um, Blizz says, the, fi the finale had a lot of exposition, but probably needed to be given. It was wrapping the story and setting it up so much. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is it kind of, 
I mean, it was interesting. If, if you're a Marvel fan, I think you'd have enjoyed it. I think you'd have, like, kind of... It, it, because if you're a Marvel fan, you know where it's going. But I think if you're not, like, a huge Marvel fan and you don't know much about the background of Marvel, um, then I think you're probably thinking, like, what the hell was all that about? Um, yeah, none of them bad, Ed. Yeah, you're right, mate. Um, VG says, if you like action films, it's probably why you like Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, I, def I definitely do like action films. Colton said, I've got Magneto here staring at me. You've got to finish his cape and he'll be done. But I haven't figured out how I want to highlight the purple up just yet. Uh, I tend to highlight the purple with a little bit of... If I can see the colour here. Um, in fact, I need to close it a little bit. Um, a little bit of Emperor's Children, the pink. I like to add a little bit of that into it and just... That focusing? I can't see there. There we go. A little bit of Emperor's Pink just to, uh, into the purple and just and bring it up a little bit. Because I find... Purples like scream of pink is 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 a nice tone with the purple as well. Um, Ed says I just really enjoyed the take on the source material for One Division. I thought it was really good, mate. Yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not complaining about it in the slightest, but um, I would just say for me personally, it was kind of it. The first two or three episodes were a bit like um, were a bit weird. I, I'd like to have got to the kind of the Monica Rambo stuff a little bit earlier. Um, Tacey Brinder says I've been doing this all 16 years of the convention so I'm used to the stress it sounds like you've been doing the prep for 16 years mate. excuse me while I have a drink James Bray yeah bad news mate yeah it's I'm, I'm okay mate thank you very much now um, Black Widow was average um, not enough superhero I think somebody told me it's more like a James Bond film it's more like a like an action spy film type thing, which to be fair, that's that's what she is, and she she is a spy really. So I, I kind of get that. Uh, John says twenty pound for Black Widow seemed lo a lot. All right, if you watch it with a few of you, but just for Claire and me, it's a it's a fair bit. To be honest, mate, I was going to try and uh, get it on <laughs> on one of, one of the streaming there, uh, the streaming apps. To be fair, mate, it was, there's only me going to watch it in our house. The little one's too young for it. My wife's not interested. So yeah, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't going to do that. Um. James says, some people got to see the first 10 minutes of the new Dune today, and it's had great feedback. I couldn't be more excited, to be honest. To be honest, the, the Dune stuff completely goes over my head. I've, I've never really been interested in it. Um, oh, I forgot, I've still got the rims to paint here as well. I've never really been interested in it, mate, even back from the old um, sort of Sting stuff and that. So the new stuff, I just... And I must admit that when I've seen the trailer, as somebody that doesn't really know kind of awful lot about it, really, the trailer doesn't really hook me. I think it's one for the fans. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's getting a getting a bit of a refresh for those that want it. Right, I'm just painting in here. It's probably gone too far with this silver. Actually, I think I've probably come in a little bit too far, but nobody will notice. Um, um, VJ says, "Am I the only one when, but when building multi-part kits who does the math and parts things out to make sure I don't get any of the same combination of parts to maximise the variety?" To be honest, me getting getting the variety is not something that I I hugely worry about really. Um, I tend to maybe not stick the heads on or something like that until the last minute and to act and kind of like mix and match them so they don't all look the same but um it depends what i'm building i suppose i think when i did my dwarfs for kings of war i think i tried to avoid getting all the same kind of like heads and bodies if you like so yeah i have probably have done that but generally it depends how much i care about where, where it is i'm doing and how much you're going to see the bits it's nice that you get options though I don't have to tie those wheels up at some point. Um, so we'll look. Like to the point of obsessing about. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't obsess about it, but yeah, I, I know what you mean, though. Uh, James, I make a spreadsheet when building some tactical marines. 
How far back is he on the chat? Uh, I am about two minutes back, mate. Yeah, never mind. There you go. <laughs> uh, he says, yeah, June, good for the fans, bit mere for everyone else. It just it just doesn't seem to kind of strike a chord with me. It's a little bit like, it. it def it's definitely kind of like fan service. If you're into that into that that world and the, the kind of the whole background and the law of June, um, I think it sounds like it's kind of, it's going to be right up everybody's street. It's proper, proper fan service. But... Um, it just it the, the trailer doesn't really hook me. I don't really know. I, I probably just don't know enough about it, if I'm honest. Uh, and if it ends up being like another like three hour film or something like the original one was, uh, I probably uh, I probably skip it anyway. I've still got a few films that I haven't even watched yet. Like I haven't watched The Irishman yet, just because of how long it is. I haven't watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood yet, and I want to watch that. So yeah, I think my. My quota of extra long films is uh, <laughs> is already filled up. Um, Frantic, hello to you, mate. Fiji says, I'm in the, <laughs> the whatever crowd. Yeah, I think that makes two of us, mate. Connor says, he's in early 12 to be exact. Still working on his Stormcast while isolating. Ooh, another one isolating. Um, Joseph saying he's pretty pumped for it. Uh, Andrew says, yeah, no real hints as to what the plot is. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, if you—that's what I mean. If you're a fan of June, you are, you you know what the plot is, and then the trailer will probably make a bit more sense. But the the trailers for somebody that's not that engaged in it just seem to be a random a random kind of link of uh, just nice shots, if you like. Uh, Tony Howell, good evening, mate. Better later than ever, he says. Of course. Um, Mark Berracloth, good evening to you as well. He's been trying to play a test, but it's too hot to think. Do you know what it is, mate? I've I've been sent a board game to um, to take a look at and do a bit of a review. One that's coming to Kickstarter later this month, and I can't tell you about it because I'm under I'm under NDA, so I can't even tell you what game it is. Um, but I set it all up today uh, after I'd got the stream set up to uh, to start working through it, and I must admit the heat was kind of the heat was getting to me. So. Put that one down for tomorrow's job. Um, Fiji says, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is awesome. Series bumped that to the top of the list, mate. Yeah, I'd, I, to be honest, mate, getting three hours to myself is a bit of a rare occurrence. It's one of them films I don't want to just put in the background. It's one I want to watch properly and kind of take it in. Uh, James says, The proper trailer hits on Friday. Only a tease out so far. It's a long bloody teaser, mate, in that case. <laughs> Says we do know that this film at uh, two uh is that two two point three? Is that two two hours thirty is that? Doesn't cover the whole book and it's just part of one. Wow. Uh he says I like June, but the trailer really hasn't done anything for me. Yeah. Uh Wayne said he's uh, isolating this too. Got pinged ping this morning. Um VG says, Did James reach out to you yet? He hasn't yet, mate. No. I've not spoken to James yet. Um I'll get in touch with him at some point. I'm just playing with this silver now. I think it's the way the light's hitting. I keep thinking I've missed bits, but I think it's just the way the light's hitting it. So, um, how should we do this then? I'm deciding how I wanna how I wanna paint this. Do I want to do it red? Do I want to leave it black? Hmm. I feel like. Let's see what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna paint Deadpool first on the sides of the truck and see if those colours um, give me a bit of a bit of an idea about what I want to do. Um, Peter says that would be on my list to take a look. Yeah, Andrew says what hot we aren't we aren't sitting there hitting ninety there in Texas in July. Stop your complaining and buy an air conditioner. Go down to underwear. We don't don't bloody sell air conditioners in the UK because nobody bloody needs them. It it hits high temperatures for about a week, uh, a month if we're lucky, every couple of years. So we don't tend to like we just we don't have the stuff for it. It's a bit like when the snow comes, we're not prepared for the snow either because it's um because it happens so infrequently. So yeah, I'm not I'm not complaining about it as such. I'm, I'd rather it was here more often than it wasn't, but it's just uh, we're just not built for it. I don't, I don't like, I don't even own a fan. Put it that way, like, and part of me doesn't want to go out and buy a fan because as soon as I do, the weather will be gone and I'll not need it again. So, 
John says, I'm not watching if you're in your underwear. I am in a pair of shorts, mate, but I'm not in my underwear, I'll be honest. I'm not getting up to show you, but just, just take my word for it. <laughs> um, James says, I'm now working directly on Ian Livingston's new school, so definitely get to meet him. Ne need to decide if it's unprofessional to get something signed or not. Absolutely it is, <laughs> but do it anyway. Um, right, I need to... I need to get a picture of uh, Deadpool so I don't put the red bits in the wrong place. Right. Okay, so that's all red, isn't it? That's what I thought. It's the way it, there's a. It, it's kind of engraved into it a little bit in the face, and the same on that side as well. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to get the red in the wrong places. But it's, it's hard not to really. There's only the. There's only the eyes that are black. So. Ooh, I must have a one long hair on the end of the brush there. Um, um, Frantic says, I'm trying to finish my Canaan's Reapers this week before leaving for vacation and no hobbying for a month. Where are you off to, mate? Are you off anywhere nice on holiday? Are you just... Are you staying local? What's your plans? I'll tell you what, that's really annoying me, that now. I've got one long hair. Just, just trim it off there. I know you're not supposed to, but. Should be a bit better. All right. Um, Christian, share the link for Patreon there. Thank you very much, Christian. If anyone does want to help out with the Patreon, it's much appreciated. Um, there's a thing doing the rounds at the minute, actually, online, and predominantly around board gaming, kind of, sort of YouTubers and bloggers and that sort of stuff. But it's relevant for what, for what I do in, like, the tabletop industry. And it's about whether it's... Is it ethical for... Um, sort of content creators to be uh, paid for reviews um, and I find that I find the arguments for and against quite interesting I mean I, I've taken the stance personally that I don't think you should be paid for reviews um, I think people can get paid for for previews which are very different but if you're reviewing something um, and giving an opinion on it I don't necessarily think um, money should change hands for that, but if you're previewing something that's sort of like um, essentially marketing, then that's a different, I think that's a different uh, question. But yeah, I took the stance to, to, to not do any paid paid review stuff um, and everything that makes me be able to do this full time is kind of community funded through things like Patreon. So yeah, if you, if you want to, kind of keep me independent if you like if you want to make sure i can continue to do this sort of full time and um bring you new stuff and give you honest opinions then uh, please do consider checking out the period so just uh come around here um Deep red, hail and well met, old son, he says. Old? Old? How very dare you. <laughs> Vichy says, put the red bits where you feel they should be. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, get my barley heat off the, off the screen there. Let's give that, let that dry. I'm going to come back and give it another layer. I was tempted to paint the van red but I think sort of like a red along this panel here but I think it's going to clash with the with the Deadpool head I kind of want that to stand out a bit so I think we might keep it like black or grey or something like that um, Andrew Fairbanks says we get a max of one or two days of freezing a year this one we get eight straight below zero Northerners wonder why our windmills aren't winterized. 
Yeah, we're kind of the same here. I mean, in the UK, we're very much kind of middle of the road weather. It never really gets too cold and it never really gets too hot. And we get quite a lot of rain and wind and kind of hail and that kind of stuff. But but, but sort of so um so therefore we're not we're not prepped for kind of warm weather or, or extra cold weather. So we don't have aircon, we don't have uh well certainly we don't have aircon in our homes. Um we don't have um sort of uh any kind of airflow really. So yeah, we just we just like to complain about the weather. That's what Brits do. It's in our DNA. <laughs> but no, I'd much rather have sunshine all the time than uh, than the cold. That's for sure. I'd sooner climatize to it. There was a long time where I'd, I'd considered kind of. Uh, Moving abroad, I did get a job offer, a job offer once in the states, um, and decided to turn it down at the last minute, which would have seen me moving out to Philadelphia. So, yeah, I had considered kind of moving abroad, but I think now with the with the little one and my older ones at university and stuff, now I think that's. Uh, Maybe one for retirement, maybe move out to Spain or something like that, somewhere with a nicer climate. Alright, let's get this come back and go do another layer on this one now. Um Fiji says my, my alarm just went off on my smashed up iPhone. I can't believe it's still running. Maybe it's salvageable. It sounds like it might be just the screen, mate. Maybe it'll just get the screen fixed. Um, Frontex going to Greece. Very nice, mate. And Peter says, I'll be going to Crete next month. All you getting away for a bit of sunshine and nice holiday. Me and my wife have been talking about booking a, a holiday abroad, but to be honest, there's, everything's changing so much with rules. It seems to change on a daily basis. Uh, and it's not even just like sort of what the UK rules are. It's the rules of the country that we go to, whether they would, whether they let you in, <laughs> whether the rules change while you're there. So I think at the minute we're just, we're kind of uh, hoping we can get away later in the year. But in the meantime, we're going to just spend a little bit of, a little bit of the summer kind of in a few places around the UK. We've got a few kind of, a few trips away planned. Um... We've booked to go to Alton Towers and stay at the Alton Towers Hotel for a few days. Um, so we're going down just before the Mantic Amada tournament. So we're going to go down on the Thursday, have a couple of days at Alton Towers. And then on the Saturday, I'm going to drive to Nottingham from, from Derby, um, or from Alton. Um, go to the Amada tournament while my wife takes the little one to the to the water park at Alton Towers. Um, so yeah, just trying to make the most of like little family trips like that as well. And doubling up with plans we've already got I'm gonna go to Blackpool for a few days my wife's never been to Blackpool my little boy's never been to Blackpool um sort of go down to the Pleasure Beach and kind of go along the front and get him like ride on a donkey he's like a proper old-fashioned kind of English holiday so yeah we're just gonna have a few like kind of days away and stuff like that uh, and hopefully try and get abroad sort of September Octo October time or something like that um, um, where are we up to here? Yeah. RPD, good evening, mate. Since I haven't done anything painting in months. Um, well, welcome to the chat tonight, mate. And yeah, get, get stuck in, do something. Tasty Brinder and I still remember when I was about seven or eight before I went on a trip to New York. I was told that many people there didn't have AC, and that blew my mind. It's it's just honestly, it's just like some buildings have it in. But they generally have AC in more for the winter. So like like air conditioning, like or heating and ventilation, really. It's more about the heating side of it to try and maintain a comfortable temperature, like in an office space or something like that, than it is to uh to cool to cool people down really, because it rarely gets that hot, like I say. We used to have air con in the in the office I worked in in Manchester, but the office was so big and it was all open open plan 
I hardly ever did anything really. Um, Tyler says, "Got a graffiti chimichanga on the van." I'm not sure my, uh, I'm not sure my uh, my kind of my text is neat enough. I saw somebody uh, writing on one of these, like sort of writing on the chalkboard on the side, and uh, yeah, I thought I'll I'll not be uh, I'll not be trying to to replicate that. I don't think maybe with a, a really fine ballpoint sort of white marker pen or something I might but not with a brush my brush skills are, are, are not that good so um, Andrew Fairbank oh Regis is going to be a bit harder to move to Spain now mate by the time I retire mate it'll be it'll be easier I'm sure I'm sure it won't stay like that forever that's for sure um, I'll just come to Australia and said mate uh, Andrew says colour palette considerations teal, pink, tan, red, no black consider the old San Antonio Spurs logo yeah I was thinking kind of like teals and pinks and like sort of like ultramarine blue type things no black, I think I'll leave the roof black but I'd like to probably do something else with the rest of it I'm tempted to, I, I'm thinking like kind of you know like kind of Miami um, sort of what am I thinking of, like Miami Vice that kind of logo or that kind of you know like what they call like the fluorescent tube things, like a neon, like like Miami neon nightclub type thing. Um, VG says, funny thing is the screen is perfect besides being completely detached from the phone. The back panel's all smashed up. Oh my God, mate, what did you do with it? John says, yeah, anything that's presented as YouTuber's opinion, I'd want it to be genuinely their opinion. Playthroughs are different if it's showing gameplay, but once you're seeing this is great, it's not. Yeah, that, that's you've lost me then. Yeah, I, I I completely agree. I mean, I, I've not taken payment for anything. I've not done anything um, for a, a sort of paid promotion or anything like that. But I, I would consider kind of, if I'm promoting something as opposed to giving my opinion on it, then I think that's different. Um, right. So how do I want to do this then? Because I was thinking of maybe doing this pink and teal on here. But then I don't know what kind of colour that leaves me behind, really. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Um, I think we're going to have to go with these. These hearts are going to have to be pink, I think, to stand out. So we'll start with pink horror for those, I think. Um, Andrew's saying, yeah, knocking on the pink colours. There's lots of Tex-Mex places that utilise them. Yeah, I think so, mate. Uh, RPD says, I much prefer the cold. I don't mind it, like... I don't actually mind the cold, if I'm honest, um, because it, as long as you're wearing the right clothes, it's kind of, you know, you'll you'll warm up if you like. But um, I hate the rain. I find the rain so annoying. Um, let's get a slightly smaller brush. That's what I should do. Um. Tony says, not been on holiday since 2007, since it's not a relaxing break for us, it's an expensive exercise in misery. Yeah, I don't think I'd be going on holiday, mate, if it was an expensive exercise in misery. Even a cheap exercise in misery is probably not worth a holiday. Um, no, I, I quite I quite like a bit of a, a bit of a holiday break. It's nice time to kind of spend some time with the family. And I mean, I know the lockdown, we've spent a lot more time together than we normally do, but Generally, when I used to be working full time in my old job, and my wife was working full time, like she'd be away from home, and I'd be looking after the little one, and then she'd come home, and I'd be going away. So holidays were something that we kind of really sort of pushed the boat out on a little bit, and did some really nice holidays, and sort of made the effort to have something to look forward to. And to be honest, I think part of part of what I'm missing with the holidays as well is is having something to look forward to. It feels everything feels a little bit aimless at the minute like there's nothing like I feel like I'm kind of just sort of working just day to day and it's it's hard to kind of focus on something in the future and I think sometimes holidays kind of they give you those little sort of like flag in the ground moments of like oh well you know we've got a holiday looking forward to or we've got like a big something big to kind of plant towards so I think I'm kind of missing that st sort of stuff as well but um and I think that's part of what's kind of disappointing me about things like the Games Expo as well. Like I've been really looking forward to the Games Expo this year. Uh, and the closer it gets, like the less that seems to be happening, the less people that seem to be attending from a 
from a um, sort of uh, like a retailer or a convention attendee point of view, not not from the actual people, if you like. Um, the less people seem to be attending, it's, it's just it feels like it's kind of taking the shine off it a little bit, if I'm honest. Um, Fiji said, I threw it across the room. It's been playing up for months since I dropped it in the bath. It's had two replaced screens. I think the bugs were deeper than the screen. Yeah. Um, RPT says, go yellow. Oh, I don't want any fancy painting yellow, mate. If I was going to paint yellow, I think I would have um, airbrushed the whole the whole thing yellow before I started. I'm not a big fan of painting yellow on big flat surfaces. But uh, we'll, we'll just keep working through it. Something will come up. I haven't really given it too much thought, so... I'm sure it'll uh, it'll come to me at some point. Um, right. Let me just check something out here. Let's um, see what uh, get some ideas. Right, in that case, I think what I'll do is go with a, a blue on the what's the kind of like surfboard y shape looking thing. We'll go blue and purple, I think. Um, <laughs> how much it looks like a proper Brit? We aren't designed for this heat. Give me rain and clouds over this any day. Yeah, we're definitely not designed for the heat. I mean, I, I would agree with that. My ancestors are. Uh, Certainly not from warmer climes, that's for sure. So, um, uh, Fiji says, yeah, I prefer cold to heat and put clothes on, you can't take skin off. <laughs> Unless you're Jeremy Dahmer. <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer, I should say. Um, yeah, I'll tell you, I know what you mean. I, I just, I, it's just rain, I think I don't like. I just don't like getting wet. bit too thin I need a bit more paint I'll tell you what I'm not very good at thinning paints to the right consistency I wish I that, that if I was going to kind of do a painting class or something like that like painting lessons I think that's the thing that would probably uh up my game more than anything else is just really understanding kind of thinning paints properly um RPD says, seeing people paint like yourself inspires me to paint. But the point of these streams, mate, really, were just about kind of having a bit of a hobby hangout for folks to come together. Like, I'm I'm no pro painter, but it's just to show that getting something done, getting it finished, like, is worth its weight in gold, really, and, and you, shouldn't, you shouldn't worry about trying to kind of win awards with everything you're trying to paint. Sometimes just painting because you enjoy it is reward enough really and, and I've, I, I always say this is a bit of a, a bit of a catchphrase really but the best the best paint job you can do is one that's finished like and the the um the sense of achievement you get from just having something completed so yeah that's that's the plan with these streams really mate so i'm glad it inspires you that's kind of that's what i hope to do if it inspires one person every week then that's good if people if it inspires people to come back and kind of join the hobby hobby hangout and it kind of almost gives them something uh, to to regularly kind of tune in for and keep them painting then i'm happy with that mate um where are we anyway rpd says oh sorry tyler's saying sides of the van cream or tan and utilize teal and pink for logos yeah, maybe. I'm I'm a bit concerned with how many coats I'm gonna have to put down to get them teal or pink. Air uh, teal, air uh, get them bare uh, cream or tan. Uh how much is it worth? Is are you gonna do some forced perspective for inside the van or just block it in? I'm probably just gonna block it in if I'm perfectly honest, mate. Um I might go back and revisit it at some point in the future, but I think initially I'm just gonna uh just block it in, I think. Or or, or kind of just make it look a bit kind of Sort of nondescript, if you like. Um, RPD says, where is the game export? It is at Birmingham NEC, mate. So the, 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 the big NEC building that's... Which is basically the National uh, Exhibition Centre. 
uh, not too far away from Birmingham Airport, if you're familiar with it. Uh, VG says, agreed, holidays give you something to look forward to. I normally adventure uh, overseas once a year. I've been 26 months now since my last trip, and I'm going stir-crazy, watching time drip away. No one's getting any younger. Tell me about it, mate. I, I must admit, I, I'm, I'm kind of going through a bit of a weird a weird phase at the moment where I kind of feel a bit aimless. I feel like I'm not really focusing on any one thing. I'm not, I don't have something like sort of to, to aim for, to to um, to kind of to aim towards. I feel like I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not motivated by money. I'm not kind of, I'm not motivated by getting like a million subscribers or something like that. I'm just, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm doing from a job perspective. But I, but I do feel a little bit aimless at the moment. So I feel like I need something to focus on. Um, Tyler Peck says, believe it or not, pink is a phenomenal undercoat for yellow. Yeah, I've, I've used kind of purpley pink uh, for yellow. The, pro the only problem is with this one now is that the vast majority of the of the car of the van, if you like, is going to be that color. So I, I would have ordinarily started with that, like primed it that color. So we'll see how it goes. At the moment, it's probably staying black um, until I get to that point, and then I'll decide. I'll decide if that's if that's that's what the best thing to do is. The one on the, uh, the the actual one on the box art is black. So I also kind of don't want it to stand out too much on the table. So there's that to be considered as well. Like it's, this is not a model. This is just a piece of terrain. So we'll see how that uh, how that one pans out. Just uh, going around the edges there. One thing. Excuse me. One thing I will say about these um, these Marvel Crisis bits of terrain is they're really nicely made. They've got the number on the bottom as, as well. I think you should be able to see a number three, which tells you what size the terrain piece is. For because I don't know whether you know this, but in the game you can you can kind of pick up and throw terrain around. Obviously, you're you're a superhero if you're the Hulk. You can pick up a tackle truck and throw it across at one of your enemies. To be fair, you can pick it up and throw it at one of your friends if you want when you're Hulk. <laughs> Um, apparently I've decided to turn this Eldor Rayflod into an action figure <laughs> well, there you go mate <laughs> VG says that's not what she said uh, Christian sharing the link there as well for the um, the OG t-shirts thank you very much Chris Yeah, if you do want to support me and get yourself a nice piece of um, Blackjack Legacy merchandise at the same time please do check out that link um, Andrew saying yes if a monkey like myself can do it you can too exactly mate like I said before I'm, I'm no no pro painter I kind of know enough to to put put the brush in the right place kind of thing really but I've got no kind of fancy skills or blending techniques or anything like that so yeah if, if I can do it anyone can do it um Fiji says this alarm's going off every 10 minutes as I can't switch it off without the screen. To be honest, mate, the, at least the battery will die soon. <laughs> um, I can only snooze it with the buttons. Just just sellotape the button down. Um, Peter says painting Zulu loincloths is pretty boring, I won't lie. I tell you, how, how many have you got to do, mate? Please tell me it's thousands of them. <laughs> In my best Michael Caine impression, thousands of them. Um, not a model that's a prime explosive tackle slinger for Gaslands <laughs> we need more likes in here I can't see how many likes we've got I can see we've got about 40-ish people in some of I, I kind of quite read it from this side of the room even though there's a 50, 55 inch TV screen on that wall my eyesight's still not that good so I'm pretty sure I, I need kind of glasses uh, glasses for um, for like distance, but the problem is if I do that, I'll be constantly taking them on and off to uh, to be painting and things. So 
I think I'll just suffer in silence at the moment. I did go for an eye test a little while ago and uh, he said it was fine. So maybe it's just when I'm, I think it's with ages, I'm focusing close up. And then when I look up, like as you get older, the muscles in your eyes are not as quick to, to kind of adjust. I think it's probably just that. Old age egg gets us all. I <laughs> have to do it anymore. Frank says, I was wondering, are you going to paint any Cursed City minis, Andy? I know the game didn't excite you much, but there's some nice minis in the box just for painting's sake. Probably not, mate, if I'm honest. They're, they're way, down the, um, way down the pecking order for getting painted. And to be honest, I'm tempted to just sell it on now. Uh, and it'll probably get me more of my money back if I, if I haven't painted them. So, yeah, I'm tempted just to shift it on. I don't think I'll ever get to it. Um... Right, what colour do I want now? Let's go with... Um, let's go with Phoenician Purple and then we'll, we'll lighten it up from that. Yeah, Andrew says, I'm a little disappointed in the model. Deadpool should be wearing a sombrero. Nah, I quite like the model, mate. I think it looks pretty cool. There's a few people online do some uh, kind of like 3D printed alternative sort of like legs and and bits for them as well which you can get you do get um a couple of different i think you get four different head types for them but none of them are wearing a hat i believe so um peter says six units of 16 models for the men who would be kings wow uh rpd says curse city any good was looking at it but the gameplay seemed dull um i it, it didn't jam with me mate if i'm perfectly honest i wouldn't I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that it's a bad game i think it's just something that i didn't enjoy personally so um which is a real shame because i was really excited for it i was really looking forward to it the theme the minis everything just it ticked all the boxes of what i what i was hoping it would be uh and then i wasn't i wasn't that happy with the actual game itself so i've played one game of it and i keep saying i'll go back and kind of give it another go um but to be honest because i didn't enjoy it it's it's not made me want to go back and play it again so i might just i might just cut my losses and sell it on i think i'm sure i'll uh, i'll probably get my money back just so somebody can have the minis um and I've intentionally not stuck them to the bases because so, I was going to change, I was going to 3D print some bases for them. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, Andrew says, Are you doing any painting when you're off stream? I am, mate. Yeah, I've been painting up my um, my Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff, which is like my, um, the stuff I'm doing like, as a hobby, really. Um, I've kind of intentionally. Um, been not doing those ones on stream so that when I do kind of switch off at the end of the day um, I've got something that's that's mine if you like it's that's my hobby stuff the only reason I'm doing the terrain tonight really is just um, I want to try and get some of it done so I can have like a nice fully painted table to play on with all painted minis and painted terrain and I've just I've not really had the time to get round to it so this is a nice change of pace to have on, on the stream on a night time really a little, a little chunky piece of terrain so yeah i've been concentrating on that mate really i think i showed some of the stuff off the other week that i've been painting i think i've got another two or three minis left to paint and then i've painted all my marvel stuff but i do still have all of the terrain so i've got like the the yeah, air like the, the the daily bugle sort of newsstand and i've got the cars and the um what they called the uh, like the lamp posts and the bins and stuff to paint but uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to getting more games in. I've not had a chance to uh, get more games in really with the, with the Euro tournament being on. So I was kind of watching football like a lot a lot of the time. Um, sort of yeah, <laughs> last Thursday's plans went out the window as well. So um, yeah, there's just there's just been I've I've kind of not had a huge amount of time to actually get out and play games. There's a few of the guys that I know play um, like on Tabletop Simulator. Um, I, I actually downloaded that the Tabletop Simulator Marvel Crisis Protocol um, 
sort of pack if you like and I had a little play with it today to see how it worked it's um it's not that intuitive but I've heard it's one of the better ones once you once you know what you're doing I've heard it's pretty good and there's loads of the lads that I um, that I kind of chat to about this game play on tabletop simulator and kind of they do little leagues on there and things they played a lot over through lockdown so I might even give that a bit of a try because they're not too bad for like if, if my if my wife nips out for a couple of hours or something like that and I'm I'm home alone looking after the little one and he's in bed um tabletop simulator is probably not a bad kind of uh a bad second choice and it, it tends to be kind of like a last minute thing it's not like a plan ahead for games or anything so um Yeah, best left on painting if you plan to move it on. Yeah, exactly. Frantic says, I see a Patreon giveaway opportunity there. No, I'm not giving it away. I, I need the money. <laughs> I need the money back if I'm not going to use it. You'd be, you'd be surprised how little I earn month to month. I could do with the money instead, to be fair. Or I could put that money back towards something that I will use on the channel for example because I did buy it for myself it was a bit of a treat for myself basically because I hadn't bought anything in ages uh, hence why I think I was more why I was more disappointed with it really I was looking forward to to having something that was really just for me and just something to kind of to play but it didn't it didn't pan out that way um Peter says, I did post a pic of my Michael Caine model from my Empress Miniatures in the Facebook group a while ago. Uh, RPD's got to go. See you later, RPD. Thanks for popping in. Tony says, feeling the pressure of painting for someone else. I really hope they like it once it's done. But this could take longer than I'm comfortable with. Do you know what, mate? Sometimes um, set yourself a little deadline, like time-wise, uh, and just say, look, whatever condition it's in at that point, it's done. Otherwise, you will agonise. I know, I know what you're like, mate. You will agonise over it worrying about whether they're going to like it and trying to do a bit more and changing it and redoing it just set yourself a deadline and then kick it out and i'm sure they'll love it i know your painting's like mate you're a fantastic painter so don't beat yourself up about it just just do, do it as if it's for you do it as if it's for you and you're giving it away to someone do it that way um Fiji says, that's the thing that worries me about Lunchbox Rainbow, besides having to call it the proper name, is trying to paint the minis like the comics. I can't see myself being that good at matching them. To be honest, mate, I mean, let me just quickly grab one of these there. Um, what have I got here? Handy. I'll show you some of the stuff I've been painting. Wash my brush. So, I've got... Let's zoom in a little bit more. Oh, wrong way. I assume that's in focus, is it? Let me tell. Let me see if focus is on my hand. Yeah, it's fine. So there's my red skull model. I've been leaving the bases because I want to do all the bases at the same time to make sure I kind of keep them consistent. But that's what I've done for red skull. So he's not looking too bad. And then we've got uh, got a few more of these. Excuse me a second. Um, and then I've got uh, Captain America who frosted up a little bit when I sprayed, sprayed him so I've, I've been trying to kind of touch it up and, and bring it back so I, I'm not doing any kind of fancy paint jobs on them this one does need to be kind of just highlighted up a little bit because when it frosted up um, I had a bit of a nightmare with it so I've kind of brought it back a little bit but I just need to touch it up again so Captain America I've got uh, Ultron which I've kind of pretty quick job on that really just keeping these kind of glowing orange parts just quite neat inside there's Ultron done um, I've got Doc Ock 
and again this one this one frosted up as well so the stuff I've put on it to try and get rid of the frosting has kind of made it a little bit shiny in places so I just need to knock that back a little bit with some matte varnish I think just paint on matte varnish there's my uh, dot up one and what else have we got We've got Baron Zemo this one really frosted badly and this one I'm gonna to have to repaint a little bit so where the purple is on the back of the head and stuff I just couldn't get rid of the frosting but at least you can kind of see the, the quality I mean the coat is all the coat and the trousers is all contrast paints just uh, just contrast paint on there and then I've just used a couple of purples kind of for the for the face and the chest so yeah it's not it's not it's not difficult mate um, crossbones again this one frosted up as well so I've kind of got to, I've got to sort of highlight some of this up, but this was essentially pretty much just like a few layers of of black contrast paint, and I did the mask a little bit darker and stuff, and not much to it really. That's that one, um, Hulk one, which I took, I did take a bit more time on this one because I really wanted to paint it, and I kind of like I just built, I just kept mixing slightly lighter greens and just kept like layering the more and stuff. I'm quite proud of this one actually. It's probably one of the nicer models I've painted in a while. Um, but this one came out really nice. Nice being a bigger model as well. And just to give you an idea of, of scale and size, you can see if I put the two of them side by side, you can see uh, Iron Man versus Hulk there as well. Um, and then I'm kind of I'm kind of in the middle of painting Captain America at the minute. So I, I've intentionally just used contrast paints on as the base colours, and then I'm going to use just normal paints over the top to try and uh, highlight it up because the contrast paints are nice. They go on lovely and give a really nice deep kind of coverage but um they're a bit they're a bit bright and a bit shiny so i'm just using them as a base color really so um yeah they're they're just building up nicely and i've got a so i've got spider-man captain marvel i've got three and i've got black widow left to paint and then that's all of my core box completely done um Let's have a look. Uh, where are we up to here? Uh, VG says, wouldn't mind trying uh, on Tubby Top Sooner here before I decide to get into it. Yeah, honestly, mate, it's. Let me zoom out of this one a little bit. Whoops, not in. Zoom out. Um, yeah, I, once once I understand how it works, mate, this, uh, I'll certainly give you a game of it on uh, Tabletop Simulator. Um, because basically, all of the different minis, all of the cards, and everything are available on there. So it's perfect to be able to give it a try out. But the, the game is super fun, man. I must admit, I'm I am really enjoying it. But then, I, it, but it, I'm a bit of a kind of like comic book nerd anyway. So I'm loving the Marvel kind of like link into it as well. So, so we're just blocking these bits. Martin T, how are you doing, fella? Nice to see you. Hope you're doing well, fella. Um, Christian sharing the link for the for the new merch as well. If you're if you're looking for a baseball cap, you're looking for um, like a dice bag or anything like that. If you check out that link, and um, there's some Blackjack Legacy merch on there as well. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, VG says that looks great, Andy. Well done. Thank you very much, mate. Tyler saying too sweet. Um, Peter says, "Did you just call I Iron Man Captain America?" Um, did I? Oh, I must. I, I, I might have done. I think it's because I was thinking I had. Still, I was going to show you Captain America. That's why. Um, Tyler says, "No, dude, Iron Man looks great to me. The that frosted look looks great." Yeah, it just. I, I was really annoyed when the, when they kind of frosted up. I've I've never ever had anything frosted up me before. And to be honest, I, I used the same matte spray on the Hulk model and it looked absolutely great it just kind of blended everything together lovely so I thought I'd use it on the other ones and unfortunately the next time I used it whether I hadn't shook it long enough or it was too humid or whatever it was like I see I've never had any problems in the past but yeah everything frosted up awful so I've had to kind of spend a bit of time trying to try to clean them up um, Tony says, thank you so much, buddy. Yeah, I've been agonizing and beating myself up. It's why I never paint for anyone. Normally needed that. Honestly, mate, yeah, just just kind of put it out of your mind about why are you painting it. Paint it because you're enjoying it. Um, but just set yourself a bit of a deadline. Just say, look, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it done by the weekend or I'm going to get it done by next weekend. And when I get to that point, that's it. It's done. Because you, you know for a fact you'll do 80% of the work in 20% of the time. And the last 20% you'll just agonize over you'll never know like when it's 
when it's finished kind of thing. I, I do the same thing myself. I constantly keep kind of like, oh, just needs a little bit more. Maybe I just do a little bit. And then sometimes I balls the whole thing up. So yeah, just uh, just take it easy, mate. Take it easy. Right, we'll let those dry a little bit. Um, Ed says, the characters have generally had so many different looks over the years, you can do pretty much anything as long as you get the basic colours right. To be honest, I, I mean, there, there, there are so many different... Let me just... There are so many different, um, like, sort of uniforms, if you like, sort of, like, styles that they've had in the comic books over the years. I've, see, I've seen people just painting them their own schemes as well, just to, just so that theirs look different on the table. So I don't, don't feel like you have to paint them those colours. I just have, because some of them are quite iconic, like Captain America and Iron Man, I kind of want to paint in those colours. Um, VG says, Rattle Can or Airbrush? It was the Rattle Can, mate, it was the Colour Forge. So Colour Forge sent me out a, a box of some stuff to try, bits of basin glues, basin materials, um, a, a can of the black matte spray, which I absolutely rave about. I used it on this one. It is the most matte coloured spray, and I, to the point where I was considering just like, only using their their primer sprays instead of using my airbrush anymore because it went on so nice and they sent me a can of the uh the matte varnish as well and the matte varnish went on really really nice on some stuff i've used and for whatever it was like i say whether it was the weather or whatever it was it just went on and it was it was awful mate um peter says have you tried re-varnishing could get rid of the frost i have tried uh re-varnishing it i have tried putting um what's it called again uh Lommy and medium over the top of it, which which I've read also works. Putting Lommy and medium over it sometimes takes away the frosting. I've tried that. Um, I even at the weekend, after reading some uh, some tips, used olive oil as well. I read that um, basically if you put olive oil over it, it can get rid of the frosting. And to be honest, the olive oil probably worked the best. And um, you just kind of paint olive oil onto the model, and then basically basically kind of like like dry it off, like rub it off with a, with a, uh, a fine cloth. And that one probably worked the best. That's the one that kind of got Iron Man back to something looking kind of like acceptable again. But it was just the um, the the crossbones and eh, the crossbones, the Baron Zemo one. I don't know if I can get close enough. I'll see if I can get close enough to the camera and, and kind of show you. Oh, there's no light. It's uh, tell you what. Let me get the light on my. This is going to be a. If I get the light on my iPhone. I might be able to kind of show you. Let's see on the back of the neck around there where it's really kind of like frosted up you can see it on the wristband there a little bit as well um yeah it it didn't it didn't end the best on that one i mean it's, it's rescuable it's not like i've kind of like ruined the model or anything like that it, it can be rescued but it's just a pain in the backside i almost started painting it there to be honest um yeah john says frosting up sucks it's the final step and it's so frustrating um, VG says those contrast over a Zenithal Prime uh, the army yeah but to be honest I, I don't think the Zenithal Prime really did much really I think it's, I, I think you get away with just doing contrast over a, um, over just a normal like a light coat, a light coat Prime um, but yeah it's just I mean to be honest that this one was pretty much I think I'd used actually I, I don't think I did use I think I used the yellow contrast over the top of some um, what's it called Avalon Sunset, just to kind of pick out some bits on it and stuff. But like they're, they're nothing flash, but they're good enough for for what I want, mate. Um, Tissy Brain doing some really nice work on those. Thanks, mate. Yeah, like I say, they're just that's my kind of like my my own hobby stuff. The stuff I'm doing for not really on the channel. I'm only doing this uh, terrain tonight because I just I, I, I'll be honest. I, I didn't really know what to paint. I'm like I say, I'm feeling a bit aimless at the minute. I feel like I need a project or something like that, something to really get my teeth into and kind of set myself a target and a deadline and things. But at the minute, I just feel like I'm just leaping from thing to thing. Um, so yeah, that's the that's why I thought I'd do a little bit of terrain tonight. Um, Wayne says your models look great, Andy. Thank you, mate. Uh, Fiji says cool. We can play. Marvel Chris put a gun on Blitzball and do my paint on chat. Yeah, that'll be nice, mate. Make, make a good make a good evening of it. Martin says, from declaring I'm not bothered about Marvel, I now have X Force, X Men, and Punisher on the painting table, plus sign up for a tournament. Which tournament are you doing, mate? 
there's a few of the lads from my uh, local club uh, started travelling around for tournaments. I think they went to one. Actually, they went to one down your way not too long ago. It was in Nottingham. I forget what it's called now, the place. But if you if, if you tell me the name where you're going, I bet it's the same place. Um, and I keep threatening it to travel down with them once I get a few more things painted. Um, should be should or should I be right to pick them up once I decide if I like the game? Um. Oh, sorry, for those in the know, how hard is it? Marvel Crisis Protocol, after the initial production run, I know if I get into it, I want Mysterio. To be honest, mate, they've been pretty good. Um, I mean, things kind of sell out sometimes as well, but they, they come back into stock. It's not it's not like they, they kind of go out of stock and you can never get them again. They've been pretty good at getting back into stock. Um, so... But what I would say is that there's a, there's a constant release. Like, I mean, you obviously don't have to buy everything, but if you get... If you get hooked, there's a pretty uh, there's a pretty uh, constant release of stuff. Um, small scene. I was finished with painting my Marvel characters, but now I'm three behind again. Yeah, like I see they come out quick. I think you can find them wherever VG, but I could be wrong. Last month I picked up the original wave of four X Men. Yeah, they're pretty they're pretty good, mate. I think um, Atomic Mass Games seem to be kind of on top of the. The release sometimes they're a little bit delayed sometimes they come out like early when they're not supposed to but i think uh, generally they're they're not doing a bad job john said i've heard olive oil wrap the mini in bacon 20 minutes 100 degrees does the job <laughs> uh and the guy that gets pedantic about not duplicating rank and file i probably end up buying marvel visual dictionary the thing is mate to be, to be honest what i've found with this is like so i've painted up hulk that's it now and i never have to paint anything else like I don't have to paint Hulk again now. I basically so what I did was I was just that's why I was just kind of like, adding a little bit like a lighter green in, blending it up, and then just kind of like layering it over the top, and then I'd add a little bit more in and, and layer it up because I, I don't have to replicate it, and, and and that's what I'm enjoying about painting these on an evening, just like as as my downtime, if you like, because once I've done that model, that's it. I don't have to paint another one the same. Like just just being able to paint like a variety of different things. Like like getting the getting the black coat um on, on red skull there to kind of look look black but look shaded and highlighted was just a nice exercise in just like little bit of grey, right at too light, dark it down a bit, little bit of black, little bit of grey, just kind of just like sort of almost blending it as I go, knowing I haven't got it replicated on another model. It's been it's been quite it's been a nice kind of palette cleanser if you like. Um Foul Mood Central, good evening. Uh, and he says, is that, is that the Chimichanga Mobile? It is the Taco Truck, mate. This is the one. So, it is the one. Let's get a little bit of yellow and paint in our taco shell there. Um, Tasty Brendan Sam, especially digging that Doc Ock. Yeah, I quite like the model. Peter says, honestly, I got frosting once. I've been varnishing by hand ever since. To be honest, mate, I've always... I very rarely varnish them, but when I do, I have always um, used an airbrush. I've always used an airbrush and done it like that. But because somebody uh, sent me some to try out, I thought I should try it out. So I tried it out on some stuff that I didn't worry. I didn't mind if it got frosted up or it, or it got screwed up or anything like that, and it worked fine. And then I tried it on the Hulk model when I finished that, and it worked fine. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just use it on the rest now. And, and then it screwed up, unfortunately. Um, James says Luminor Caesars is finished stuck a picture on my Brain Mini's Instagram I'll have to have a look mate Vision says bacon equals 6 inches if you know you know <laughs> bacon 6 inches exactly mate <laughs> but is, is bacon equal to like is it like three three pork chops or something though Right, we're just going with the yellow here. This is Avalon Sunset. We're just going to paint in the, the taco. I must remember to do his fingers as well. Paint his fingers in. Um, Ortega, hello mate, how are you doing? Uh, <laughs> Martin says, the team tournament in Derby, Boards and Swords. Probably went to Seventh City Collectibles. It was Seventh City Collectibles, mate. Yeah, but t t to be honest, the the guys in my group have just signed up for a team tournament, so I assume it's probably the same one, mate. Because they were asking if anybody was uh, if anybody fancied it, they were potentially looking to take two teams down. 
So I think a few of them have signed up. They've definitely got one team players. Um, and they were potentially uh, looking to, to take a second one as well. Because there's a nice little uh, nice little gang up here playing Marvel now. So uh, if I can if I can swing it, mate, I might even see you there. Um, John says Carl can lift six miles of bacon. <laughs> yeah, but but he can he can, he can throw it a pork chop. <laughs> um, Tony says another box starter set challenge for all of us to join in with. Why was Exodus Infinity except name a small group starter and go with it? I might do me. I, I could do. I I think I need something. I need something just to kind of to kind of get me excited for stuff. Like there's not a lot coming out at the minute. Like obviously. There's things I'm kind of looking forward to. I'm, kill team, I can kind of take or leave it at the minute. I'm still not 100% convinced about it, and I'm, I'm still not convinced I'll even sort of pick it up or get any games about it, uh, games of it. So I'm kind of still on the fence with that one. There's there's a few things that I'm not overly keen on about it. I'm looking forward to Overdrive, um, but obviously that's a little way off before I can start getting my hands on and painting that. Actually, while I, while I remember on, Mantic are doing a, um, like a, like a hobby weekend, what, what they call it, like a boot camp, where um, I think basically you, I think it's £50, and you get the boxed game and some other bits and pieces. So you turn up on the Friday night, um, you get your box, you can start kind of like sort of building the models and stuff. On the Saturday, you can kind of learn how to play and paint all your models up, because there's only eight models in the box. Uh, and then on the Sunday, there's a bit of like a tournament thing, like a bit of a fun tournament. Just I say a tournament; it's more of just like a like everybody like kind of getting together and playing with some prizes and stuff. Um, but I've I've signed up for it. I've booked myself a hotel. I've bought myself a ticket. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to that as well. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully other people turn up. Otherwise, it might be the first tournament I ever win by default. Um. Let me scroll back a little bit. Peter says, seeing their resin, they might be easier to restock for the company instead of hard plastic from China. Um, these are not resin, mate. These are all plastics. If you're talking about the Marvel Crisis stuff, mate, they're all they're all plastics, these. 100% plastics. I'm kind of, I don't know if you can see on the base there. Yeah, all plastics, mate. Um, James says, Andy, I'm off my first gaming club event on Saturday. A war cry learned to play. I just saw that, mate. Congrats. It's nice to hear people getting out and playing games again. Um, I need a bit of green for the lettuce. I never thought I'd be painting lettuce on a model. I'll be honest. Um, let's go with a bit of a bit of green here. Um, yeah, I saw you doing that. Have we decided what um, what faction you're going to take? Um, Tony saying olive oil chick needs some dill capers and black pepper. <laughs> Uh, evening fell mood central pro jg says just finished painting deadpool need to get the truck at some point um yeah i'm uh, i'm enjoying painting this i haven't painted my deadpool yet i have built it he's uh he's ready to ready to get some uh, some brush love on him and a little bit of paint i have done it so that i think the paint's holding together at the minute but i've, I've done it so i can take the the model off and kind of paint it off the stand um, and I know a few people said they weren't overly keen on that like, foosh thing, but it does come separately and it's kind of shaped so it sits on top of the cloud so you don't have to fit it. Um, you don't actually have to fit it on the rocket either. There's different um, different base type stuff. There's different um, heads, different um, leg options as well. So you get quite a bit of different stuff with that. But yeah, I, that was that was the one I liked, so that's the one I've gone with. Um, right, I'm going to have to concentrate on this a little bit and get this... Get these green bits of lettuce in here. Um, Christian sharing the link there for Goblin Game as well. Thank you, Chris. If you are buying anything from Goblin Gaming, please do consider clicking through my affiliate link. I get a small commission and you pay exactly the same price. So it helps, uh, helps support the channel. Thank you. Uh, VG says, yeah, painting single minis is a double-edged sword for me. I love the idea. I only have to do that model once. I also worry I can only do that many once. <laughs> you can always paint it again, mate. There's nothing wrong with that. You can always paint it again. John says, is this 
This is the value for us unbiased opinions. Matt Black is good, Varnish bad, though all Ruttle can, Varnish can trust up. Yeah, I, like I say, it, it all can. What I would say, what I would say is, and this is my honest opinion, like all joking aside, is that the matte black is fantastic. I will one hundred percent recommend the matte black spray. It goes on really fine, and it goes on really smooth, and it is super super matte. I think I've also got. Um, I used it on some of these Malifaux minis as well, um, and I've just literally dry brushed those with a bit of Ultwan Grey just to pick out the edges, and it's. It's almost like some of them are meant to be like kind of like spectre sort of ghostly type things. I'm almost considering just leaving them. It looks so good. So yeah, I will 100% recommend the black. As for the, the matte varnish, I'm sure it's probably something I've done wrong because it worked and then it didn't work. So I'm, I'm not saying the matte varnish is bad, but it, I certainly wouldn't recommend it over anybody else's. Um, <laughs> Bacon equals three pork chops equals six sausages. <laughs> Pacer, so basically tricked you tricked you into confidence and then when you mass adopted screw you over like democracy basically tricked you into confidence i'm not sure i must have missed something there me i must have missed that one um did you catch the kill team activations article today i did mate it didn't didn't really say a lot other than basically the only thing that I would say that kind of has got me thinking, and I need more information really to form an opinion, is that if some models can take more actions than other models, like Space Marines can take three actions versus like a Guardsman who can take two, that makes them like super powerful. Because you can imagine if they use one to shoot, then one to charge, and then a third one to like do an extra attack, that makes them super powerful. The I hope they're kind of point costed accordingly because if, if what we know from the website there's loads of choice for the um, space marines versus like kind of one choice for harlequins for example or two choices for well grey knights i suppose will get the extra stuff and um, what else is there there's something else that's got like two choices i think they say like custodies have like four action points so they must be really highly point costed i'd like to see it that the way the way it's balanced out is that both players get the same amount of actions to take so if I'm an Orc player and I get, let's say, 10 actions because I've got five models, then I'd like to see you can only take three Space Marines because they get three actions each kind of thing and maybe a Scout. Uh, some Something like that, you know what I mean? I, I, hope, I hope it balances out like that, but we won't know. I think tomorrow's article is going to talk about building the list and stuff, so we'll get more then. Colton says, I think I'd be, I'd be in our kill team if that terrain wasn't Orc-themed. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I mean, there's there's a lot of things. It's it's like there's not one thing really grabs me enough that that's kind of took me over the edge. Part of me is thinking purely from a business point of view, I'm probably stupid not to pick it up. Like that's where all the views are at the moment and stuff like that. I'd be daft not to look at it. And then part of me is thinking just from a purely personal point of view is actually it's not really interesting me that much. I'm a like like I, I don't I'm, I'm not I'm not that engaged in it. Like like to the point where I want to spend 125 pound just to kind of make some content kind of thing but at the minute I'm, I'm a bit i'm a bit in the wilderness really there's there's nothing really new out there that's kind of grabbing my attention i, I think i just need to set myself like i said before I, I think i need to set myself a bit of a a bit of a challenge a bit of a a bit of a project and uh and get back into it that way right i'm looking to see how do i want to paint this stuff right i think I need, to paint, I need to paint his fingers red while I, while I remember before I forget. So let's get that red bat out. Um, Foul Moods is like, I, what I like about Crisis Protocol is the looks of the models. Very nostalgic for me. Haven't even looked at the gameplay system, but the models are very nice. To be honest, mate, if, if you're just looking for some nice stuff to paint, it is a cool game for that. Um, it's nice just to be able to pick up the Marvel stuff and like if you're into your comic books and stuff like that. Um, it is good for that, but I'm. But I'm. I did a little video a little while ago about why five reasons why I was completely wrong about the game, and I, ha I had some kind of preconceptions about it. It's preconceptions, preconceived ideas, preconception. Yeah, and um, I had some kind of preconceived ideas about what I thought the game was, based upon some gameplay stuff I'd seen, which turned out wasn't really reflective of, of the game itself, but um. Yeah, some of the local lads gave me a few demo games, and it was like, oh, yeah, I like this. This is this is going to be something that I, I just like sort of keep keep for hobby. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Right, I just keep layering this same stuff on. I, I can tell I, I'm I'm just like I'm in one of those funny moods because I'm just I'm literally going over the same stuff again and again. Just I'm just pushing a brush around. It's weird. I'm enjoying the chat though, so we'll keep going. Um, yeah, Peterson. Yeah, I thought the muscles were resin. No, they're they're all plastic, mate. Um, James says I have iron golems and night haunt. Might take the night haunt as it's a bit different. I haven't played in a while, mate. But night haunt used to be pretty. Uh, Pretty tasty with their flyability. And um, Sumberlin, good evening, mate. This is preparing some battle systems buildings for my first Rangers of Shadow Deep game on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Nice one, mate. Nice one. Uh, Tyler says painting challenges that me and some guys have done in the past. February was Love Bug, so a bug, what, whether car or animal. Uh, April Fools was paint a clown or something silly, and All Hallows Eve, scary monster. Yeah. Uh, John says, I reckon they were saying doing Hulk gave you confidence in the varnish. And then you did it in bulk and it screwed you over. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was it, mate. That was exactly what it was. Uh, Ed says, Harlequins get three, Custodes four. Yeah. We'll find out tomorrow about that, yeah. VG's agree on base, basing the kill team list building on total APL. Yeah, you have to balance it somehow. It can't be balanced. It can be balanced on points. But um, I, I like what they're trying to do. They're trying to say, look, a Space Marine is kind of superhuman and he should be more powerful. He shouldn't just have two wounds versus like, a Guardsman has one wound. Like, they should be tougher. They should be able to take more damage. They should be able to put out more power. But in order to make it a balanced game, they need to be expensive. Like, they need they need to be, like... You, like, you can take them, but you can only take three of them or something like that. Or you can only take four, and everybody else gets to take 12 kind of thing. So it has to balance out somehow. Um, Ed says, I really don't think there's an activation point pool based on how that was written. I don't think it's a point pool so much, mate, but I think it'll be balanced as in sort of by the, the, the points. So if he, let, let's say you can take 10 guardsmen, and they each get two activations. That's 20 activations you've got across your team. Um... If you, if in that case, you should only be able to get roughly 20 activations out of a Space Marine squad, because if you can get, if they're super powerful and they take three actions each and you get 25 actions out of them, for example, or, or uh, 21, let's see, let's see you can take seven of them and you need 21 actions, you're, you're, you're out activating your opponent with much more powerful models, if you like. Because what happened in old kill team was if you took a, if you took a powerful squad, you could, you, if you took like something that was high in points, that was a bit more powerful. Your opponent could out activate you with like a, um, let's say, let's say an orc army, right, where you take like a horde of them, kind of thing, where you end up with twelve, fifteen models or something, and your opponent might only have five models in a kill team. Out activating somebody is really powerful. It, the same thing happens in Warcry as well. Uh, Teluki D says, Taco Van, curious to see vehicle window painting techniques. You kind of have me. I am not, I am literally kind of, I'm painting them black and I'm kind of going to like dust them up so they look a little bit, um, just kind of as if the light's hitting them and kind of uh, doing that. Um, VG is saying, yeah, we join the people and we do the, the painting and the mini swap challenges. Yeah. Uh, Peter says, if Marvel had figures and games back in the day, I probably would never have discovered GW. Yeah, you and me both, mate. Uh, thank you, Christian, sharing the Amazon link there as well. Uh, Ed says, activation advantage will probably be balanced in part by at least by the ability to multi-activate trooper models. Um, multi-activate trooper models. I think you. I think it's... Mm, I'm not sure I agree, mate, but we'll, we'll find out tomorrow. If, we'll know for sure. Um, right, I'm kind of... I'm losing my way a bit here. What do I want to do with this? Let's paint the little um, the little Deadpool thing on the on here. So we'll start with a bit of bit of red at the bottom of the flames here oh there are a couple of chilies okay I'll tell you what we'll do we'll not do that we'll start with the yellow flames and then we'll come up from there and we'll put the red chilies on the front uh, Am I, am I blocking it in with my head or anything there? No, I'm all right. Uh, 
Uh, Tyler asking, uh, VG, VG is over in Australia, mate. In case he doesn't see the, the question there. He's our, our friend from down under. I just need to move this a bit closer to my eyes here. Getting old, you know, folks. So yeah, I think I think I just need to I need to give myself a bit of a project. I might I might even start a new Kings of War army because I really enjoyed doing that uh, doing that um, sort of the slow grow campaign thing. I feel like I just need something that uh, like, like I was saying before. But you know, when you've booked a holiday and you've got something to look forward to and stuff, I think I just need something to kind of focus on. So. Like I'm not going to get something painted in time for the summer campaign, but I don't know. I I, I need something. I need something to kind of focus on. I think. So we'll we'll see. Oh. If you've got any ideas, folks, I will happily take any suggestions. Um. Yeah, <laughs> the magical land of beer and koalas. <laughs> I like that, mate. Uh, hello, Sunday Psych, by the way. Ice Moon says he comes from the land down under where women glow and men plunder. I was watching that thing on Netflix the other day about that, um, like the kind of like, this is pop. And the guy that's the lead singer of uh, Men at Work was in the documentary talking about singing at, was it called the Us Festival? Which happened, I think it was in the 80s, that Steve Wozniak um, put together, the Apple guy. Um, and it was about. And they, they live streamed it to Russia at the height of the Cold War. Um, and it, it was a bit of a, it was meant to be kind of about bringing continents together and stuff like that. It, it was, the episode I watched was all about fe music festivals. It was quite interesting actually. And they were talking about Glastonbury and uh, about Woodstock. and It was really interesting. Um, James says, from a content point of view, mate, I think regulars appreciate a series, a Monday stream, picking a game army, a game refresher, a few weeks of painting streams. I think the problem is, mate, it's the, because I kind of avoid the GW stuff or, or going heavy into the GW stuff because it's generally not what interests me most of the time. I mean, there's some exceptions, like Kill Team's kind of piqued my interest. Um, I, I'm still a big fan of Warcry, so there is exceptions to it and stuff. Um, but I think what happens is as soon as I start to focus on one thing for too long, um, I lose subscribers randomly. So if I if I do a week, for example, of um I don't know, let's let's just say Marvel, right? I'm doing this Marvel stuff. If I did like a week or, or two weeks worth of content on on Marvel, the folks that don't want Marvel contact content just disappear. And I've seen it before, like when I focused on uh, Kings of War, for example, or I focused on Warcry, or I focused on uh, anything. When when something comes up that I'm really interested in, and I've kind of done more than the, than the average amount of content for it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. What happens is you attract new subscribers because they think they're going to get that game all the time. Uh, you lose subscribers because they're waiting for their game to come round again, um, and and then when you stop doing that game the ones that subscribe for it all disappear as well it's, it's a it's a really it's a weird balance it, it's why i tend not to worry too much about it but it's hot like because the whole foundation of what i'm doing is based upon like sort of attracting people who like a mix of different games um feel kind of like a bit of a safe space is a bit of an overused word but you know what i mean they feel like they're in a like a nice environment a, good, a happy community and stuff uh, and they like variety in much the way that I do, um, and then hopefully that kind of convinces them to support through Patreon and support the channel that way. And and that's why I'm like I'm trying to keep those folks happy really with with one eye on trying to keep growing it. But at the end of the day, I I just got to make sure that it's it's kind of it's interesting and it's fun for me as well. I think what's happening at the minute is I I've just lost a little bit of focus. Um, and I think I sometimes get caught between a rock and a hard place. So, um, right. Right. Just 
painting those in. A bit more red on those chilies there just to pick them up. <laughs> the thunder from down under. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. VG says some of us are crazy and hang around all the time. Yeah, that's what I mean, mate. That's what I mean. Like, like you lot, especially you lot, are kind of coming to these Wednesday nights because these Wednesday nights and we're never designed to do big numbers. I'm ne I'm never going to get huge numbers for kind of just a paint and hang out. It's not like I'm really teaching you anything or anything like that. It's it's definitely a bit of a just a hanging out with mates kind of an evening. Um, but yeah, that's what that's what these are about. It's it's, it's you lot really, you crazy fools. Uh, Tyler says we did monthly challenges due to everyone varying work schedule. It was fun. Some did more than others, but it was more to keep people painting something. Yeah, I, I agree, mate. To be honest, that's what my challenges have been around, and and they were always about like, not being the best. It was about completing it. Um, but they work. They work best when they're focused. I've found. I've, I've found if I give a a topic like paint something red, for example, because I'm painting red at the minute. If I use that as a topic, I think it's so open ended. Most folks don't bother randomly um, and then if I do something very focused like um, paint the dreadball team it gets more folks involved but then I get more folks complaining that oh I don't I don't play that game so it, it's kind of it ends up being a bit of a double-edged sword so I have to I have to try and sort of spread them out between different games and different manufacturers and all that kind of stuff there's more, there's more, I am. Um, what do you call it? It's more the, the sorry, the, 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 there's more kind of like channel management stuff than I think most folks realize. Um, Peter says, I'm not here for the games, to be honest. Well, not the primary focus. I'll take the company over the content. Yeah, that, exactly. I think sometimes folks just kind of hang out for, to have folks to hang out with. And there is nothing wrong with that at all. It's it's always been about community and about community building and, and kind of bringing thoughts together. Like Tony saying there, mates hanging out and chewing the fat. Exactly, mate. That's kind of what, what that's exactly what it's what it's about, really. It's just about bringing folks together. Because there ain't many places like that on the internet anymore. I think what I think generally what happens is if you're not covering games workshop stuff, like sort of all the time. Um, your channel will grow to a certain size uh, and it's like there's a glass ceiling if you cover anything else um, and what happens then is most folks who put time and effort and spend money on camera equipment and everything else get to a point where they get a bit frustrated and they just go this is this is not going to go anywhere else not going to grow any further any bigger um, and they kind of just they get burned out by it and they stop doing it so I tried to do this slightly differently so that I could do it full time and could continue to cover the stuff that I'm interested in and keep the community aspect at heart at the heart of it all. Um, so that's what I've done really, and it's a hard slog, folks. I mean, let, let, let's not let's not beat about the bush. It's like I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of one month one bad month. If, if everybody just decided that they didn't like something that I'd said and all all the Patreons walked away. I'm kind of one bad month from saying, "Well, look, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to kind of look for another job, really." So it's always going to be quite, quite tight and quite sort of, sort of knife edge for quite some time. But as long as I can keep it going, um, and keep making that minimum amount that I need each month, now I'm not like I've always said, I'm never looking to get get wealthy out of this. It's about just being able to. Be able to fill a niche that other channels don't do and to be able to continue to do something that i absolutely sort of love passionately really um something takes it i'm here for the live streams more often in summer because i wake up with the sunrise which is more like 4 a.m <laughs> when your streams start um yeah i apologize that the time isn't uh, it doesn't suit everybody mind john says hanging out and chewing the bacon fat 100 percent mate uh, Christian saying time for bed. No worries, mate. Take care, buddy. Um, <laughs> says that could be a problem. Yeah, I know, mate. And um, Jim's saying night there as well. VJ says don't forget the thumbs down on your way out. Yeah, please. I'd, I'd feel I'd feel bad if that if that didn't happen. To be honest, I, I stopped looking at that stuff now. 
I only kind of half have an eye on how many views things are doing really. I tend to worry less about the live stream stuff and worry more about like some of the video stuff that I do that takes quite a long time to film and things. I kind of like to see that do well. But um, Right, let's go back and stick some silver on that grill. Because I forgot to do that before. How are we doing for time? I am melting here. Excuse me while I have a drink. Right. Boy, it's hot in here now with the lights on. So what's everybody got planned for this week? Anybody up to anything this weekend? I know James is saying he's off to his off to his first gaming event. Anybody else got stuff planned? Tyler says he's off as well. Family's going out for the son's birthday. Enjoy, mate, and happy birthday to your son as well. Hope he has a great day. Um, to be honest, I, I'm going to be uh, probably calling this in about 15 minutes as well. I'm starting to melt in here. Um, so I'm probably going to call it a night early as well tonight. Well, I'll still have stream for two hours to be fair I'm surprised the bloody uh, computer doesn't overheat to be honest because <laughs> the air in here is certainly not cooling it down <laughs> Yeah, VGC, another wonderful weekend in lockdown. Yeah, I keep forgetting, mate, you guys are uh, going back into that again, aren't you? Well, we've we got basically, we've had our restrictions kind of lifted in the UK, but um, I've not actually been anywhere to, to see any difference, so I'm still just at home. Took my little boy to the park last night. That's uh, about as far as I've been. But to be fair, I could do that before the before the last lifting of restrictions. Tom Moss says he's got his son coming down for the weekend. Lots of gaming. Oh, nice, mate. Very nice. Sounds like a nice plan. Uh, I think I'm going to paint that front bumper as well, actually. And the back bumper, randomly. So... Um, so this is try to figure out how and what to paint for a painting competition in September. Is there a theme to it, mate? Is it like is there is there a particular theme or is it a particular game or is it purely just a, a kind of like a best painted? Like do you have to paint like a, is a single miniature or see if we can help you decide? James is saying, looking forward to painting the creek from the kill team. Going to do some snow bases on them. Yeah, the snow bases would be nice, mate, on those. I think we're going to see a lot of Krieg painted minis coming up soon. Pre-orders go live next month, so the assumption would be that um, it'll probably be relatively early August. Which means we're definitely um, people will be able to get them into their hands sometime in August we'll see all the unboxings going up all the YouTube channels who get the kits on the <laughs> get them sent out to them on the Thursday or the Friday and then rush to make videos to make the 10 o'clock deadline on the Saturday and we get hundreds of unboxing videos I definitely, I've kind of got some thoughts about a topic actually at the minute for a, for a Monday night live stream and I need to give it some more thought. But I definitely feel that there's there's a bit of life in a topic about how how the hype for something dies out once it's, once it's actually available to buy. 
Um, there's definitely a, certainly with the bigger stuff, and I think it's board games as well as miniatures games. Like there's a lot of hype for something, um, and then once it's actually out and available to purchase, and like Dominion seems to have died to death. Like nobody's talking about Dominion at the moment randomly. Um, and so as soon as like as soon as the new thing is kind of sort of out and done, say like, right onto the next one. And I just think that's a shame. I mean, things are expensive. People spend a lot of money on this stuff and kind of save up for it and look forward to it and struggle to actually to get their hands on it. And then as soon as they have, I'd say these things are untalked about. Um, yeah, Jameson, still not too sure about the scenery. Yeah, I'm with you on that, mate, as well. I mentioned that on the live stream on Monday. I'm not... Uh, I think it's like... Like some, I, I get most of the kind of like the GW scenery is is very forty k, but enough of it is kind of is usable in other kind of sci fi games if you like. Like you could use the crates and the containers and stuff quite happily in like Infinity or in sort of um, sort of uh, Warpath Firefight or or Dead Zone or something like that. But the orc stuff I feel is really like 40k orc specific. And that's fine if that's if that's what you're wanting it for, if you're wanting it for 40k. But um yeah. It is it is very specific for that. Um Tony says I'm waiting on the individual Krieg box, but I'm looking forward to that. I fancy doing a tent trench diorama. That sounds pretty cool, mate. I think that would look good. I don't think you'll have long to wait for the Air Creek stuff to come out, if that's what you're after. You might even find you'll be able to buy it kind of on eBay or something like that. There's probably to be box splitters, folks who just want orcs. So. Um, Bobby says, good evening. Paint studio was far too hot. So sent a, f a good four hours of Druridge Bay. Sun it up with a girlfriend. That's the way to do it, mate. Make the most of it. Get out and get some fresh air. We'll all be complaining. We kind of go out anywhere when it's chucking it down in the winter. Nice to see you getting out and about, mate. Colton says, I have a local store that has five boxes of Dominion still. Yeah, my, my local store, mate, had to sell it off cheap. Because nobody was buying it. They almost sold it off at cost price just to get rid of it. Because they were going to get stuck with a whole host of it. And I don't I don't think that's a necessarily a kind of like a, a comment on the state of AOS and where it is and how popular it is or anything like that. I think it's maybe just more about um, more of a, a, a thing about when GW try to, to make more boxes of stuff. Maybe they underestimate just I think I, I, I think they just struggle to estimate how many boxes they're gonna sell I must admit mind the new Age of Sigma um, the Age of Sigma 3 like starter boxes like the cheap boxes are a, a good value if you're into that kind of thing if you're into that kind of game <laughs> VGC is cool you can give me a scenery uh, so it's actually I was thinking of putting one of the big I was thinking of painting one of the big models from Dominion uh, VGC says, we've had more than enough ruined gothic buildings and industrial pipes and tanks I'm glad they're doing something different. I agree. I, I'm kind of glad they're doing something different, but I just wish it was less specific. Like it seems, like if you think about it from a theme point of view, if you're using that in anything other than the game of orcs in, it seems a little bit random that you're kind of you're fighting over orc terrain. Do you know what I mean? I can't imagine orcs ever leaving it behind. Uh, Frantix is after painting 14 traitor guardsmen for Blackstone Fortress. Those Krieg models gave me the same feeling. After the first two or three, it was a slug. Uh, James is saying his local store must have had 15 to 20 copies of Dominion. I think my local store mate had about, um, I think he had about 60. I think he thought he was going to get stuck with them. Colton said, I think they didn't want another Indomitus fiasco. I think it's just, I think it's generally just less popular than 40k, mate. I think that's uh, that's the top and bottom of it. I think folks like the new um, the new orcs, but I think the um, the stormcast was 
a little bit kind of underwhelming really right Just need, uh, we'll tie up a few bits on that as well um, Right, I'll tie up those few bits while I've got the silver out. Is that one on that side? Um, Colton says they could have maybe kept the ramshackle style of buildings, but not put the orc symbols on there. Yeah, I, I do kind of wish that the orc symbols were were completely separate. I mean, when they showed off the um, the the what they call the sprues on their live stream, they're definitely kind of molded on. And I know you could kind of you could cover them up and stuff like that. You could you could plastic hard over the top of them, or you could try kind of like sort of um, filing them off or whatever. Um, it just would have been nice if they were kind of separate pieces that you. You just stick on where you want, really, or, or not stick on, as the case may be. But yeah, but no, I, I agree, VG. I think it's great that they're doing something different. Because I, I do think that kind of stuff would not sell in any kind of numbers enough to justify doing it outside of a big box release like that. Um, Tiberius, hello, mate. Says he's the thing. What's never covered in forty k buildings is shops where people live. Uh, do you know what it is, mate? I, I completely agree. It's one of the things that doesn't really kind of um, sort of pull me into the forty k universe. It's one of the things I, I like about um, I like about Infinity is the fact that like it, it, it's set in a world where people live and go to work and like they, they kind of have jobs. Like and I'm sure they do in. Um, in the 40k universe like they like they can't be people like living on planets like literally all homeless starving to death like some of them must have jobs some of them some of them are making kind of like things for for the imperium and stuff like that it'd be nice to kind of see like to see some of that stuff for a change but everything everything is just about these sort of mass battles in kind of ruined wastelands um, Deep Red says, my eyes are starting to hurt from staring at these elves and I'm flagging, so I'm going to call it and I take care. No worries, mate, I'm going to call it a night soon as well. I'm just finishing off these little bits and then I'm going to call it a night as well, so take care, buddy. Sunday Tice says, my locusts are had about 12 copies and they have three or four left. Pretty decent number of people play in my town. Um, yeah, it's... I think what I think for some people, unless unless you play those armies... Maybe they just wanted the rule book. I know that's what happened in my local area. A lot of folks just said, well, I don't need more Stormcast or, or, or I don't play Orcs. They don't really interest me, so I'm just going to buy the rule book. Um, and, I, and I think that happens more so um, in AOS because I, I don't think Stormcast are as popular in AOS as Space Marines are in 40k, really. So I think there's, there's an element of that there as well. Um, we're just gonna paint the inside of this as well. Like the the, the, the storm cluster are popular, obviously, but I don't think they're like kind of. I don't think they're as popular. Like if you if you would say to me that sort of sixty percent of forty k players play play Space Marines. I kind of wouldn't disagree with you, but I don't think it'll be anywhere near that level of Stormcast players in AOS. And I think that's because basically a lot of the new stuff that gets released is not necessarily Stormcast. It's like you know we've we've had some really nice stuff with the the uh, Lumineth Realm Lords. We've had the Osiarc Bone Reapers. We've got the new Orcs coming out. Like there's quite a lot of like nice. Other factions in AOS. Where in 40k generally it takes forever for anything new to come out. Like other than the Necrons, like Sisters of Battle. We've not had a huge amount of stuff other than the uh than more of the same. Um
Yeah, what Ed's saying there is right. He says they made about the same number of Dominion boxes as they did in Dominus. It sold in numbers any other company would celebrate, but for GW, it's not been a great launch. I think it's because everything sells out so much for GW that anything other than selling out these days, uh, even if even if they made twice as many copies as they did of Dominion, uh, as they did of Indominus, and sold like 140% of it, like 140% more, if you like, um, I think the fact that if you could still pick up a box, people almost see that as like a, uh, as a failure randomly. The one thing everybody wants is to be able to buy one after launch day, and when they can buy one after launch day, everybody thinks it's been a massive failure. It's kind of catch-22 really, isn't it? It's a weird one. Uh, yeah, 40k does, doesn't have a habitat. It's a very Blake 7 industrial battleground. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's nice from a, from a sort of just purely just have a battle type thing, but it doesn't it doesn't feel a world that's lived in. And, and as somebody like I said before, like not not massively kind of into the 40k law. That's that's the well, the one thing that kind of stands out to me is it doesn't feel a world that's that's lived in. It might do in some of the stories that I've not read and stuff, but certainly from a from the stuff that you get from a gaming perspective, it's just like this. Like the whole the, the tagline about there is only war kind of thing is exactly what it is. Like that there is only ever war. Like there's never any downtime if you like. There's never any like any humans scattering away from a from a planet because it's been invaded or anything like that. Because like there's like no rundown shops and houses and things like that. Kids' schools. Do you know what I mean? Right. That'll do for me tonight, I think. It's far too hot in here, and I am absolutely melting. So, um, 20 scene, yeah, 40 kids on the habitat. But you're saying that Big Daddy Vulture model looks awesome. I want one just a paint and display. Yeah, they make they make some amazing stuff, mate. Let's not let's not kind of uh, get on the box about it. They, they know what they're doing when it comes to miniatures. Uh, it sums up the capitalist conundrum, the expectation of infinite growth in a finite market and planet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a sexy taco van. It's looking alright. It's, it's starting to come together, getting a bit more colour on it. Just, I just tonight's been one of them nights where I've just enjoyed just kind of pushing the brush around. I think. So yeah, it's coming together. It needs a lot more work, but it is getting there. You never see an all popping out to get some milk. You don't, mate. You don't. On that bombshell, as they say, I, I'm going to call it night. So thanks, folks. Thank you, every single one of you, for coming in tonight. I do appreciate the support, especially when it's uh, it's that time of the year when folks are holidaying and uh, the weather's nice and people want to go out and do other things. So I appreciate everybody um, everybody uh, uh, coming in tonight. So take care, folks. Please leave a like on your way out if you've enjoyed the stream tonight. And I hope to see you all on Monday for another live stream. So take care, folks. Thanks for watching my video, I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month, and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server, it will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now.